All right, so this is part two of the tutorial on how to make the ball roll around this guide path that we created. In this, we're going to assign a shader, and we're also going to animate this ball inside the control curve to give the appearance that it is actually going to be rolling around this guide path rather than just sliding across this guide path. So the first thing we're going to want to do is actually hit the number five so that we can get a texture. Actually, we're going to press the number six. Five actually shows the default shading of the object, whereas pressing the six will actually show a texture. Right click over the sphere, assign new material, and go ahead and assign a Lambert. You can do a blend or any other shader you want. For uh, myself, I'm going to do a Lambert. In your attribute editor, if you do not see your attribute editor, hit Control A so you can get away from your other controls into your attribute editor. And then click on Lambert 2. Under the color attribute, underneath the Lambert type, click on the little checker box. In this one, I'm going to go ahead and hit checker. And you should see somewhat of a checkered texture show up on the sphere that you have on your viewport. Hit Control A so that it will go back to your channel box and so that your window will be a little bit bigger to work in. Now what we need to do is select the object, the control curve actually, and hit the letter E so we can see our rotations. We are going to line up the X rotation along this path so that it gives the feel that it's going to be moving along a very specific uh, rotation, a very specific angle. The very first thing we need to do is actually assign this to a negative 90 Sorry, on the rotate Y. Negative 90 on the rotate Y. Your red angle should actually disappear because it is now covered up by your blue rotation. Over at number 6, you'll start to see your red angle reappear. At this point, you actually want to hit negative 45 so that you'll see that the zero point of this control curve is now lining up with an angle that makes it look like it's going to be rolling around here on that one angle. On frame 12, you want to hit 0. On frame 18, you want to hit positive 45. Frame 24, you want to hit positive 90. On frame 30, you want to hit 135. Sorry about that. I accidentally hit a number that um, changed the uh, smoothness of my object. So 90 plus another 45, 135. This one is going to be 180. 42 is going to be 225. And then frame 48 is going to be 270. And again, it should disappear underneath your blue. Now when you scroll through, you should see that that red angle is actually following along your path. Now that that is set up, now we can actually control the rotation of this ball, independently of the control curve that you have parented to that control curve. In frame 0, we want to go ahead and leave the rotation x at 0. On frame 48, dependent on the size of your control curve, you may need to adjust this. Uh, for this purpose, I'm going to go ahead and try this at 1440 on the rotate x, 1440, hit s for to set a key, and then back on frame zero, make sure you hit a, um, S to set a key at zero. So now you should see from the top view, you have the number six selected. Go ahead and deselect your item, and left click through through your timeline, through your time slider, and you should start seeing the ball actually rolling across that X axis independently of the control curve. The control curve locked it to its position 
and now the ball is free to roll in whichever angle that you want to do. In this case, I want to make it appear that it is rolling around this circle. Now you want to make sure that this ball is actually not sliding at all. That's why I set my rotation up so high on the rotate X of the ball so that the ball does not feel like it's sliding around this path, rather it's actually rolling. I'm actually going to go ahead and hit spacebar and go to my perspective window. And I'm going to zoom in, make sure you hit the number six so you can see the rotation of the ball with the texture. I'm actually going to look at this and make sure that it feels like it's rolling. At this point, I would say that it's not feeling like it's rolling as much as it's sliding. So I'm going to reselect the ball. And at the very end, I'm going to change this to 2000. And now I'm going to deselect and scroll through again. And after some playing around, in this case, it doesn't look too bad. But I'll use a little bit more love. But at this point, I would say that I have this ball now rolling along that path independently of the control curve that you assign to this. Uh, you guys can go ahead and adjust your rotations to your fitting to make it look even nicer, but at least now you have a general idea of how to parent a sphere to a control curve. That way you can have two forms of animation for that one object. If you guys do have any questions, please feel free to send me a message or you can leave comments on this video on part two or part one and I will address those the best I possibly can. Alright guys, I look forward to our classes together and uh, look for more videos coming for me. You guys have a great day, have fun and happy, happy animating.